Hi everyone. Let's have a look at now this section where we talk about the special cases under the uh, India S10 uh, events after the reporting period, right? There are three aspects that you would be uh, required to know, and that is something which is critical from an examination standpoint as well, where we look at how are these aspects uh, treated under India S10 events after the reporting period. We have long-term loan arrangements, and I would like to emphasize that this was already covered under India S1. It's just about looking at uh, this uh, again in the in the in the you know under the lens of India S10, for example. Then we have going concern again. Importantly, this is also covered under India S1. And then of course we are talking about dividends. On a presentation perspective, I can still argue that this is also covered under India S1. So so let's have a look at it. It does not require a lot of lot of discussions because a detailed discussion of these aspects was covered well within the front of India S1, right? When I say long-term loan arrangements, we are simply saying that no matter what is written under you know, the, the perspective of what is an adjusting event or a non-adjusting event, right? In case there is a breach of a material provision of a long-term loan arrangement on or before the end of reporting period with the effect that liability becomes payable on demand, right on the reporting date the agreement by lender before the approval of financial statements for issue to not demand payment as a consequence of the breach shall be considered as an adjusting event so much of text it simply means we share the perspective okay let's say i'm talking about year which is ended 31st of march 21 and we're talking about also date of authorization which is let's say 31st of may here okay let us say the company did a breach of the provision so let's say there could be a, a loan for example a long-term loan right availed by the company and there are conditions right there would be conditions with respect to restriction on payment of dividend managing the liquidity managing the debt equity and multiple aspects and if at all any of the conditions breach right then this long-term loan payables becomes payable on demand okay and what we are saying is in a practical scenario that can always happen that you can or you may renegotiate right you may go back to the bank and renegotiate on the term because the money is not there right and and even the bank probably would want you to be looking at it on a renegotiation side where we are saying that in case there is a discussion that takes place that you know anything or any time any 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 time before the date of authorization right any point in time on the before the date of authorization if the renegotiation takes place which which in context by the way is a non adjusting event right because the circumstances don't exist on this date circumstances don't exist on the reporting date that that you would go to the bank and and then renegotiate and make it you know uh, again you know uh, paying in as per the original term or as per the delayed terms as the case may be but here it becomes an exception as far as such kind of long term borrowings are concerned what this standard is suggesting under india 10 that if there is a long term loan that becomes payable on demand on the reporting date because some material conditions were breached okay and later on a renegotiation takes place and the bank or the lender reinstates that right? the bank or the lender reinstates the original terms of the loan okay which in reality is a non adjusting event which in essence is a non adjusting event it shall be considered as adjusting now so this 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 is a kind of an exception to the rule okay and when we really go back on this you know uh, statement what we just read we are simply saying that irrespective of what we have learned about non adjusting events when there is a breach of a material provision of a long-term loan okay before or on or before the end of the reporting period and thereby that loan becoming a current item becoming payable on demand 
if there is an agreement by the lender before the date of authorization to not demand payment, then you can reinstate that loan as again a non-current item. Okay, that is something which is the crux of this particular discussion, right? Let's have a look at this example. We should be able to kind of connect with the thought process with this. It says that on 1st of January 15, Alpha Limited raised finance through debentures, privately placed with Beta Limited, redeemable on 31st of December 24. The terms include a covenant or a condition that the debt equity ratio should not exceed 2 is to 1 at the end of any reporting period. If the covenant is breached, then the lender has a right to demand the prepayment of that money. Okay. For the year ended 31st of December 2020, the debt equity ratio actually exceeds the benchmark and therefore Beta Limited has demanded an immediate repayment, okay, which, which actually suggests that something which was due, you know, four years later from the reporting date now becomes a current item. However, there is, a, there is a discussion that takes place between Alpha and Beta and 12th of January 21, for example, there's an agreement between the two parties wherein the lender is not seeking the repayment immediately. The date of approval of the financial statements is 5th of February 21. Now, what we are saying is if we really bring that timeline here, okay, we are saying that this is my year starting 2020 this is 31st of december 20 uh this is 5th of february 21 this is my date of authorization or approval this is my reporting and this is where any event between these two dates is an event after the reporting date right so there is a breach that took place on 31st of December and on 12th of January, you know, somewhere here, probably 12th of January 21, there is an event where you are coming to an agreement that you don't have to pay that money immediately. It becomes, again, in principle, it's a non current item. Okay. Although the fact remains that the circumstances did not exist. And hence, this event shall be considered as a non existing event. Okay, but from the standards perspective, as a special case, we want to call it an an adjusting event. Here. Okay, we want to refer this to as an adjusting event, and that is something which is explained here. It says that in the current case, considering the breach, the debenture is becoming on-demand liability and should be accordingly classified as a current item. Only later. There's an agreement wherein it is not demanded immediately, but this is not resulting into a scenario or a condition which existed on the reporting date and therefore is a non adjusting event. However, importantly, it becomes an exception to the rule and just in case there is an agreement to that effect that the lender is not going to demand for the repayment it shall be considered as an adjusting event, which simply means in the given scenario on 31st of December 20, that loan should still be classified as a non-current. So effectively we have adjusted, you know, that presentation of that liability as a non-current item instead of showing it as a current item. All right. So that is what we are look, looking at as a part of this particular paraphrase okay the next step again we discussed that in india s1 we're saying that an entity should not prepare its financial statement on a going concern if the management determines after the reporting period for example it intends to liquidate or cease trading or maybe it has no choice but to do so there could be a a, a legal issue there could be a restriction on the business there could be you know a, a complete lockdown of the you know entire business for for whatever reasons and accordingly you might only be able to determine that probably after the reporting period right now effectively on the reporting date the circumstances did not exist right it is arising only after the 
date of reporting, right? But effectively, we are also saying that in case you are required to close down your business, in case you're required to shut down your business for whatever such reasons, right? In those cases, you cannot prepare your statements, let's say on a going concern basis, right? It could be a non-adjusting event, but then it would be in principle or, or in substance too late for shareholders to react or to get to know about that. And that's the reason why there would be let's say you know a requirement to prepare your set of financial statements on a on a liquidation basis right and that's what we're trying to say that there are specific disclosures when you are not preparing your financial statements on a going concern or for that matter there is a there is a there is an instance that the management is aware of any material uncertainties with respect to the business continuing as a, as a going concern specifically okay let's have a look at a small example around it it says that Reliable Limited was incorporated to apply for and cater to tenders floated by a government agency for the various supplies. The agency is located, located at various uh, parts across India. Uh, the company was awarded a tender for location A for five years starting in 2015. It has also done bidding for several other locations in this case. For future years, the bid was finalized by the agency on 2nd of May 2020. Okay. And the company, the, the company under consideration, failed to secure any of the bids. Currently, the contract to provide supplies at location is the only activity taken, which will expire on 31st of December 2020. The management has approved the financial statement for the year ended 31st of March 20 on 28th of June 2020. The question is, should Reliable Limited present its financial statements on a going concern basis? Again, follow the fundamental rule. Look at whether this event is an event after the reporting date or not. That's the first question that we want to address here. So we simply build a timeline. We are looking at my year end as, or my reporting date is 31st of March 20, right? That's the information that is available. The date of approval is 28th of June, 2020. So this is my date of approval. Right, so any event between these two dates, right, is going to be an event after the reporting date, right? And of course, the final bidding, which did not go in the favor of the company, those were, those were announced on 2nd of May, 2020. So somewhere between these two dates, this event took place, right? So essentially, it's an event after the reporting date that's the first question that we always try to answer the second question is did the circumstances or did the conditions exist that such an event could take place right did those conditions exist on 31st of march 2020 the answer is no clearly no right now are we saying it's a non-adjusting event well in principle yes because that's what the definition is all about, right? Which, which, by the way, suggests also, which by the way, also suggests that I don't have to worry as far as 31st of March 20, that is my reporting period is concerned, right? I don't have to worry about that event at all. I would probably only do it on the date of the event, right? But then since it's, it's, it's really casting doubt on the, the going concern ability of the business, Right. It's, it's really causing, a, you know, it's really resulting in questioning on the status of whether the comp, whether the business would continue in future or not. And that is where we need to go back on the reporting date and adjust those financial statements as if the going concern assumption is not valid. Right. Even on this date, we need to prepare our financial statements on that basis. Right. That is something which is the underlying principle of this special case as a part of India's 10. Okay, let's have a look at the formal solution as well. It says that an entity shall not prepare its financial statements on a going concern basis if the management determines after the reporting date, either that it intends to liquidate the entity or cease trading or that it has no realistic alternative but to 
do so. So you bring that recognition principle in the solution, right? In case your examination is testing you on such kind of parameters, it is always recommended, right? It is always recommended to put that concept around. Your examiner always appreciates that, that you know it, right? And you mention that part well, and that's where the, the marks are awarded, right? So in this case, we have provided, there's a deterioration in the operating results and the position that would need to consider, that would need the management to consider whether this going concern assumption is valid or not, right? If it's, if it's not valid or no longer appropriate, the impact is so, so serious, the impact is so pervasive, it's across the, you know, the entire set of financial statements that the standard requires, that this standard requires a fundamental change in the basis of accounting. Okay, so you don't have to really take a take a take an impact on the specific section of financial statement, but you bring it across. So that is what you need to kind of bring along. And of course, we have provided that in the in the given scenario, even the even the running contract or the only contract is expiring on thirty first of December, right? And since it happened between the reporting date and the date of approval, right? You need to make a judgment as an organization. You need to make a judgment as a company whether there's a possibility of a going concern assumption staying valid. Just in case you, you conclude that, that it may not happen so, right? So you cannot prepare the financial statements so or even for the running year, which is 2019-20 on a going concern basis. Right, it's a very straightforward thought. Nothing, nothing typical around it, and that's something that we have talked at length even under India's one presentation of financial statements. So all these special cases, be it a, a long-term, you know, liabilities uh, breach, for example, right, or be it a going concern issue, or be it a payment of a dividend, we want to see that as well, of course, in the discussion. So they are all coming in through from India's one's perspective. It is just that. You know the, the 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 references made on an event after the reporting period specifically is a non-adjusting event. That's what we are trying to understand it further. Right. The final leg is about the dividend. In case an entity is declaring dividend, okay. In case an entity declares a dividend after the reporting period, okay, the entity shall not recognize those dividend as a liability at the end of the reporting period. Okay, that's that's simply the the reason, the fundamental reason again is that those that present obligation does not exist. Right, the present obligation does not exist on the reporting period. Right, and accordingly, in case, for example, that is happening between the two dates, right, it would not be, of course, shown for the same reason that that obligation does not exist on the reporting date. And those dividends are simply disclosed as a part of the notes under NDS 1, which is presentation of financial statements. I think the whole, whole context lies on this very idea, whether there exist evidences or conditions at the end of reporting period or not. And that's where you take, take the decision making around this, right? We have a small example. Let's have a look at it as well. It says, Omega Limited follows year ended 31st of March. The management of the company approves the financial statements for the year ended 31st of March 20 in its meeting on 17th of July. Omega has declared a dividend on 6th of July. The question is whether Omega Limited should recognize the dividend in 1920 or 2021. What do we do now? Again, the timeline, right? That's, that's a standard procedure that we want to follow. And it is advisable to use and and you know pictori you know pictorically reflect that in the examination also. I'm looking at my reporting date, which is ended 31st of March. So we may say 1st of April 19, then we have 31st of March 20, and then we have 17th of July 20. Now this is my reporting period. Right. This is my reporting date. This is my date of authorization. And any event between these two dates is 
an event after the reporting period right any event after or between these two dates is an example of an event after the reporting period now when did we declare the dividend we declare dividend let's say on 6th of july here right so essentially this dividend becomes an example of an event after the reporting period should i go back and call this dividend as a liability on the reverse of march 20 the answer is no we don't call it as an adjusting event right but we would give a disclosure of this as a part of the notes to the set of financial statements right let's have a look at the formal solution again it says that any dividend declared after the reporting period you do not recognize it as a liability because no obligations exist they would rather be disclosed as a part of the notes under india s1 which is presentation of financial statements right you would only be then of course as with the requirement of the occasion which year should be followed we're saying that you recognize the dividend as payable for example in the year 2020 2021 right but of course in the last year or the previous year the declared dividend should be as a declared as a part of the notes to the financial statements all right so these were the, the these were the special cases that we wanted to of course you know discuss and of course understand in terms of the implications all these three aspects just try to reiterate the breach of a long-term liabilities conditions a material breach for example the going concern uh, assumptions validation and the declaration of dividend they're all coming through india s1 and being tested from the perspective of india s10 as well okay Finally, on the disclosures, you need to give a disclosure clearly. We have discussed that. What is the date of approval of the financial statements? Who's the approving authority? And just in case, in case somebody else has, apart from the board, somebody has the power to amend the financial statements after the issuance, even that fact need to be disclosed, right? Any, any adjusting events are any which ways accommodated in the financial statement, but for the non-adjusting events, right? for the material non-adjusting events, you need to also disclose the nature of the event, what exactly happened. And just in case you can quantify the financial impact, you give that. If you cannot quantify that impact, you need to give a, you know, a clarification, to give a statement that such an estimate cannot be made with the reasons thereof, right? So that so the users of financial statements are well versed in terms of you know what is that that had happened and accordingly they may you know they may be in a position to of course you know address these at the respective forum for example in case of a uh, you know an agm for shareholders all right now just to kind of uh, summarize what all we have discussed my events could be either adjusting or non-adjusting this is the second question for us right the first is what is the meaning of an event after the reporting period? We talked about it at length. The second part is, when would that even be an adjusting event and what do we do with that? Similarly, what would be a non-adjusting event and how do we go for the disclosures around that, right? And then we are looking at specific aspects of long-term loan arrangements, going concern and dividends, all right? Now, this is one of the questions which was tested in the examination. It's an eight marks question. So very safely, you can plan around 14 to 15 minutes of your time, including the reading time, planning time, and of course, solving that, right? One way to understand this is there are, for example, four parts to the question. So maybe it would be okay to assume that we can align two marks to each of the section, right? That helps you to plan your answer well you don't have to devote too much of a time let's say out of the entire entire conversation into only one part right so accordingly these kind of calculations may be done okay let's have a look at it it says that discuss with reasons whether these events are in the nature of adjusting or non-adjusting and the treatment needed in the light of india's 10. the first instance says Moon Limited won an arbitration award on 25th of April 2019 for rupees 1 crores. From the arbitration proceedings, it was evident that the company is most likely, likely to win the arbitration award, which it actually did. 
for the year ended 31st of March 19, the financial statements were approved on 1st of May 19. Now, importantly, we are again addressing the need whether this event is a event after the reporting period or not. That's the first aspect, right? And then we look at, of course, whether this event is going to be an example of an adjusting event or a non adjusting event. So that's always the rule under NDS 10. Okay. But now we are further provided the management did not consider the effect in the year 2018 19 as the case was favorable to the company and the amount came after the end of the financial year. Okay. Now, what do you want to remember? Not just those two questions that whether this event is a you know, is, is, is an event after reporting date or not. And of course, the other aspect is whether it's an adjusting event or not. You also want to remind yourself that it does not matter whether the event is favorable or unfavorable. Okay. It is not a prudence concept which is applicable or which is requires to be kind of aligned. Simply means that all material events, all significant events, whether favorable or unfavorable, if these are adjusting, they need to be brought into the accounting, right? It simply means in this case, let's use some space here. I'm looking at my reporting date as 31st of March 19. Go back there. And then we are given, of course, the date of approval is 1st of May, okay? And somewhere in between on 21st, 4th, 5th of April, we got this award confirmed, right? Essentially, the first step, it's yes, it's an event after the reporting date. Second is that the conditions existed on the, you know, the reporting date that such an event can arise, right? It simply means it's an adjusting event, right? and the contentions by the management that it's a favorable event so you don't have to you're not you're not allowed to recognize that it's not it's not appropriate right we need to adjust our financial statements and recognize an income for the year ended 31st of march 19 no matter the award is getting you know, or, or is being received after the reporting reporting date does not really have a significance in making the decision there. All right. So this is the first instance that we wanted to pick up here. Let's have a look at the second scenario. It says that MM Limited has a trading business of mobile phones. It purchased 1,000 second-hand mobile phones at 5,000 rupees each on 15th of March 19. Okay. The seller had announced that the selling price would be revised on 1st of March 19, the announcement was made, but did not announce, let's say the revised price. It has valued the inventory at 5,000 rupees each. However, on 8th of April, new inventory had arrived, which actually dropped the net realizable value okay, of the existing inventory at rupees 4,000 each. Right. Now the financial statements of the company valued inventory at 5,000, and not at 4,000 subject to any, let's say, you know, expenses to sell or cost to sell, right? It, the reason given by the entity is basically as the price reduction in selling price was affected after 31st of March 19. Now, again, you bring the same question back, okay? We are saying that this is my reporting date. This is the date of the event, 8th of April 19. And somewhere later we will have, of course, date of approval, right? So essentially it's an event after the reporting date, right? An indication that the prices were going to be revised, right? It, it, it suggests that the conditions existing on the reporting date, okay? And in case of inventories, any which ways we need to consider that even closely, right? Which suggests that if this were the scenario, I need to, of course, remeasure the inventory at the net realizable value, which is rupees 4000 per unit subject to, of course, 
cost to sell, right? I need to revisit that price from this perspective. And it's a very clear instance of, of course, an adjusting event in my case. That's all right. Let's have a look at the third scenario. Now it says that there was an old due in the books of White Incorporation from a customer amounting to 15 lakh rupees against whom insolvency proceedings were instituted prior to the year ended 31st of March 19. The customer was declared insolvent on 15th of April 19. Now, very candidly, right? This is a specific instance where we can safely say that on 31st of March 19, there exist those conditions that the default is likely, right? There exists the conditions that the default is likely. It simply means that this is a classic example of an adjusting event. What does it imply? It implies that this entire 15 lakh rupees has to be shown as a bad debt. So the entry that we want to do is a bad debt, 15 lakh debit, credit, it's a reduction to the receivable, of course, of the same amount. Okay. Of course, we are saying that being receivable amount adjusted or reduced as an adjusting even there. All right. Finally, we are given the fourth instance, which says SLR Limited's management announced that it will restructure the operations of the company subsequently after the year end and before the financial statements are approved. And the board of directors plan to make significant redundancies and to close a few divisions of the company's business. However, there is no formal plan yet. The question is, should the management recognize a provision if they later on decide to restructure the operations? Now, essentially, in this case, what we want to remember now, this instance, we talk about restructuring, which is a part of India's 37, which is provisions, contingent liabilities and contingent assets, right? Categorically, India's 37 suggests that any restructuring provisions can only be created, right? once there is a formal plan which is announced and the amount can be ascertained you know there's a realistic estimate of that amount can be made right a pure plan by the management right purely only a plan by the management does not suggest that the conditions exist on the reporting date that you want to let's say restructure the business so in this case this would be an example of a non adjusting event, which simply means only disclosure is required to be given. All right. So let's have a look at the formal solutions for each of these instances. We're talking about, of course, the, the meaning of the event after the reporting period. The first instance we discussed that amount received or receivable should be reported. Even though it's a favorable event, you should still be adjusting your financial statements, right? The second case we discussed that the inventory valuation has to be, of course, accommodated, right? Again, because, they, because the conditions exist is around that, right? In the third scenario, we talked about that the, the, the receivable was impaired. And of course, you would be, uh, you know, uh, adjusting your financial statements with respect to that bad debt. And finally, as we said that there's no plan, there's no formal plan in place as on the reporting date. And therefore, it becomes an example of a non-adjusting event, all right? Now, finally, we're talking about the key differences between, you know, the the uh, the, the AS and, and the NDS, right? Specifically, any material non-adjusting events, they need to be disclosed in the report of the approving authority, for example, a director or GMS report. But under NDS, these are the disclosures as a part of the financial statement. So this is not of the financial statements, like in case of the AS. Finally, we look at the accounting treatment and disclosures with respect to the 
going concern assumption not becoming valid, right? So we say that under the AS4, all those assets and liabilities need to be adjusted, right? Now, from from the from the India's perspective, there's no there's no you would not really see a, a change around it, but but here we are talking about you bring that as a part of the fundamental change on the basis of accounting again. So apparently they would not be seen too much, you know, they would not have seen differently from each other. But the fact is you started looking at it from, from the perspective of India S10 as well. You know, there's going to be a, a, a an adjusting event, you know, in the in the context of let's say the presentation of the financial statements. All right. So this is something that we certainly wanted to cover as a part of this particular standard. Okay, we'll be dealing with the questions and you know testing our knowledge on those in the different in the next section. Okay, thank you very much.